All right. Greetings, all. It's Max. We're back. We're going to do part two real quick, as quick as I can make it here. You know, obviously with the stuff going on in Ukraine and, you know, my video yesterday about buying the Bitcoins, we'll talk a little bit about all this stuff and why I thought it was kind of urgent at the time in order to put that out. Um, so in, in, in doing, a, I didn't really care about Ukraine. I honestly, I don't. And in looking at the history of U Ukraine and Russia, Basically, they've had a, a, a thing going on for a long time, and they have what these 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 guys in Ukraine, uh, they call them separatists, but really what they are is the people that don't like the Ukrainian government that actually want Russia to take over Ukraine. So they have a civil war going, and they've been fighting back and forth for 20 years, okay, since the breakup of the Soviet Union. So why America is involved, and why does America care? Because you got to have something on the news, guys. That's all there is to it. We need to have more chaos and more reason to take people's rights away. That's all there is. That's all there is. This is a fight that's been going on for decades. Decades. And being that Ukraine used to be part of the Soviet bloc, you know, it's kind of like, you know, Russia has a little bit of a little bit of a, you know, territorial grasp. Russian people who want to be part of Russia are there. They call them separatists. Right? Just like the truckers are separatists from the Canadians. Right? They're separatists. So that's what's going on with that. And in my poking around, though, I did, you know, I wanted to see about the money thing. Uh, exclusive Ukraine Central Bank eyes new IMF talks in April to uh, soothe markets over with Russia. Uh, we need money because Russia's attacking. It always comes down to that. I looked to see what their currency was based on, and it's based on fiat now. But in looking back through the history, because a lot of these, a lot of these uh, uh, acts of aggression are basically because the country doesn't want to have a central central bank, an IMF controlled central bank like the Bank of London, like the Federal Reserve, etc. So we'll look at this, uh, this right here. As of February seventh, twenty fourteen, following political instability in Ukraine, right, civil war, right, the National Bank of Ukraine changed the hiverna, that's their dollar into a fluctuating floating currency in an attempt to meet IMF requirements and to try to enforce a stable price for the currency based on the Forex market. So they took whatever they were basing their Haverna on, whatever that happened to be, and they made it basically 100% fiat like the American, American dollar. Oh, if Americans can do it, we can do it too. And the IMF agreed to just give them as much money as they wanted to, I'm sure, to do that. And then what it says right here, uh, on July 31st, uh, July 2019, the Haverna to U.S. dollar exchange rate in the interbank foreign exchange market, oh, I guess it's strengthened. We see right here, it weakened by 70% that same year. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, they're changing their peg, changing their peg. Uh, in 2014, so in, 2014, in February 2014, they went to a fluctuating floating point currency at the behest of the International Monetary Fund. In 2014 and 2015, the Haverna lost 70% of its value against the U.S. dollar. Immediately. Thanks, IMF. Thanks. I'm sure they're really on Ukraine's side. Or are they on Russia's side? Probably on Russia's side. With the currency reaching a record low of 33 whatever per dollar in 20, 2015. So... It looks to me like the, the world superpowers, you know, U.S. and Russia are buddy buddies. Go back all the way back to World War II. We're buddy buddies with China as of the early 90s. This is all a, a fraud and a scam. And this is WWE, WWF, or even you have Trump in the headlines saying, I'm going to go kick Putin's butt, blah, 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 blah. Nonsense, 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 nonsense. Okay, just to fire up the Trump supporters, okay? It's absolute garbage. It's funny, though. Look at this chart. This is their Haverna, and obviously it's too small to see. You probably still won't be able to read it, but you can see right here. Where do you think this is? Where you have this big... This looks like the American inflation rate, doesn't it? This is right here at this point was where they agreed to uh, go to straight fiat and not have their currency based on anything. Whoa, look at that. Look how much value it lost instantly. Instantly. Now, no matter what is going on in the global scene, whether or not it's cooties or some war somewhere, guys, it always, always, always comes down to money and control. Okay? Always. Always, always, always. 
Money is control. So we're going to go back and then we're going to bring up Bitcoin again as we're going to just kind of finish this up. Okay. Um, I went on last night around 11 p.m. Central and it was Bitcoin was around 35 grand. And I said, yeah, it's bottomed out and uh, good time to buy. And if you did buy, you're up 10 percent. Not that that really matters because Bitcoin is likely to go down the more that the war drags on and the more bad news and the more bad press and the more whatever it's likely to fall back down. But still, uh, you're in it. If you're in it, 35,000, even if it falls a bit, you really don't care. And in six months, it's going to be easily over 40, if not closer to 50. Bitcoin's a long play. It's a long play. It's real actual sound money and it's a limited resource uh, hedge funds big huge mega corporations are buying hundreds of thousands of bitcoin every year and there's not that much left what do you think is going to happen when there's no more left to sell right now the price is being suppressed okay it's for the benefit of everybody to get in while you can to get in while you can and i'm not saying sell your house and go buy bitcoin i'm saying you got an extra fifty dollars have some have 50 bucks worth of bitcoin you got an extra 50 bucks or 100 bucks at the end of the month you're figuring out well should i go out take the family out to pizza or put it into bitcoin probably should put it into bitcoin and i'll tell you why when we get to the next screen here so on the bitcoin thing like i said if you bought yesterday right now, you'd, you'd be up 10%. It's not a big deal. Um, if you if you buy any time under $40,000, you're pretty well fine. Obviously, you want to get in as low as you possibly can. Or if you're dollar cost averaging, you know, dollar cost average as low as you possibly can. But in the long grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. What really matters is actually having funds that the government does not control. Okay, that's what matters. And I realize that I am a far way out there guy when it comes to, you know, conspiracies and ideas and religious fundamentalism and all this stuff. But I'm not the only one saying this stuff. And I don't think that I actually uh, express how urgent it is to people. Because I'm watching other people that have nothing to do with conspiratorial ideas, nothing to do with fundamental Christianity, nothing to do with any of this stuff. And they're screaming at the top of their lungs that people need to do something. All right. I guess maybe I'm just too. Uh, uh, I've heard it all and seen it all where nothing much really gets me worked up anymore. Right. I don't know. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to play a video. This is uh, James from Invest Answers, guy I've been listening to for a year, pretty much since he started YouTube. I am a subscriber to his Patreon, so I do have some, I get some inside stuff. And this particular video is one of his inside things that I probably shouldn't be sharing. But I'm only going to share a little bit about what he has to say about central bank digital currencies and about what happened in Canada, where you simply donate to a protester. And you have all of your funds shut off and you get fired from your job. Okay. Let's see what he has to say. This is somebody who is not, this guy is straight as an arrow. Okay. He pays more taxes than he even should be paying. Follows all of the rules, does all of the stuff. And what he does with his profits is he gives his money to charity to support animals, abused animals and, and wounded animals and all this stuff. This is what this guy does. He's not part of fighting the government. He's not an anarchist. And uh, covered it for down. So first of all, the executive order summary, for those of you who are not up to speed, uh, the <coughs> they're directing the Treasury, State Department, et cetera, Attorney General to study the central bank digital currency. CBDCs are coming, everybody. If that's not enough to terrify you after the shit we saw happen in Canada and the stuff we see happening in China and Russia, and the European Central Bank, European Central Bank is just crazy. Um, it's coming. They want full control. They can cut off your money unless you do something like, I wouldn't even talk about what they could force you to do. But anyway, the second thing is the study of the financial stability of crypto. Not too bad. Third thing, 
look at digital asset impact on market competition. This is a dirty one because they're looking at, ooh, could the digital assets hurt our traditional banks, our JP Morgans, et cetera, that sponsor our political careers? So they're looking to protect their buddies, their friends. And the fourth thing is uh, look at market protection, which is kind of good. So the summary of what I see, one, CBDCs, yes, they're looking at it, but there's a lot of politicians now that see that CBDCs will be very unpopular. And if you ask people six months ago, are you afraid of the CBDC? They say no. If you ask them today, 90% of them will say yes. And I did a survey on Twitter. Um, <laughs> so that is scary, but that shouldn't rattle the markets. The big thing I'm kind of worried about is SCs, which for me stands for stable coins. They uh, are calling for them to be only issued by insured banks so that US regulators would have more jurisdiction over the industry. For example, line JP Morgan's pockets, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, all the big money center banks, banks of America's, they wanna take away the stable points and give them to the banks. And yep. then you know. So that's what you have. That there is James and Invest Answers, and he's a, been a financial advisor, planner, stock trader, everything for like 35, 40 years. And he knows this world and these people and what they're doing. And he doesn't talk politics for the most part on, on what his channel is. But this is a guy who's coming from outside of the conspiratorial view, telling you exactly what is the plan is and exactly what's going to go on with CBDC, central bank digital currencies, which are basically, you know, you think of a blockchain spyware um, slave device that they call money. All right. This is why you need Bitcoin. Now, they can fire people and close down people's bank accounts just with fiat, okay, with fiat currency, right? Because a lot of it's digital and you got to go through the bank and all this other thing. But can you imagine what they do if they had complete digital access where you don't even have bills in your, in your billfold anymore? You can't even choose to take your money out of a bank and put it in a safe. Everything comes on your little government uh, card with your biometrics and your face scan and all this other garbage on it in your tracker chips. So that's why Bitcoin is important right now is a good price. Um, anything under 40, 40 grand. All right. Like I said, it's probably going to go lower. The thing is, are you going to be able to time it? Are you going to be right there ready to buy whenever Bitcoin say goes to 34 or goes to 33? No, I got lucky. I just happened to see it. If I would have went to bed early, I would have woken up and I would have completely missed it. Okay. So that's what's going on there. And uh, why people, why people need things like Bitcoin. Now, obviously the market is down. Everything in crypto is down, but not nearly as bad as traditional markets. Traditional markets have absolutely tanked. And you look at Russia's traditional market, their version of the stock market is apparently down 50%, as is their ruple. Okay, so markets all over are tanked, but even though Bitcoin's down, it ain't tanked that much. Okay, it has not tanked that much. What is going up then? What is going up? Well, if you're looking at people who like their gold and silver, now is the time gold and silver is going up. Is it going to do fantastic gains and all of this stuff? No. Are you going to be going to the store to the 7-Eleven and buying a Slurpee with a, a silver quarter? No. We're never going to be in Mad Max. We're never going to be off a system that's not basically running on the internet that's not digital. Okay. Because nobody, you show up at a store with the silver, even if they would accept it, they can't prove that it's silver. You can't prove that it's actual silver. Right. A person would have to be a coin expert in order to do trade with you. All right. All they are good for is investment assets. And if you're going to have an investment asset, why not just do something that's on the internet that takes up no space that no one can confiscate? Okay. But gold and silver are doing good. What else is doing really good? All of the commodities, guys. Copper, platinum, palladium, crude oil, bent oil, natural gas, heating oil, gasoline, aluminum, zinc, nickel is up 300%. Okay. Amazingly, copper is down and wheat is down now, but it was up yesterday. Uh, your soybeans. Yeah, things are actually have come down since yesterday. They must have been a big fear thing. But if you don't want to invest in Bitcoin, look out for your future and protect your money. 
you better at least buy a little extra food. Okay. I've been, I've been saying buy some extra food for two years, two years. And then I got a job at a grocery store where I got to see firsthand exactly how much things are going up now with, Oh, we got war in Ukraine and some, somehow it's America's problem, right? They're going to blame everything on this war. And we also, of course, in America, we have a trucker protest that's going to Washington, D.C. Okay, that's going to be some problems in the supply chain there, guys. It's the time to, like, be shopping for them deals. Probably if you don't buy Bitcoin, go out and buy a freezer. Okay, buy a freezer. Even if you live in an apartment, buy a freezer. You find a good deal on meat, buy it. When you get a good deal on, it's called buy the dips, buy the dips in everything, buy the dips in everything. Don't ever pay full price right now, because who knows how far this inflation is going to go. I don't personally think they're going to raise rates in March anyways. Um, and even if they did, they were talking a quarter percent rate hike for interest rates. Okay. The government is stealing 20% of your income every year through inflation. And in order to combat that, the Federal Reserve is going to raise rates by a quarter percent. Does that make any sense? No. What would they have to do in order to actually lower inflation is they would have to raise interest rates to the rate of inflation. That would mean if their official number is seven and a half, eight percent is their official inflation number, they would have to raise the rates for interest rates to nine percent. This is what they did back in the 70s. To combat inflation, they rose uh, the interest rates to 14%. They can't do that this time because if they raise the rates to 9%, the government wouldn't even be able to pay its bills for a day because of that compounding interest. Okay. Speaking of that, when people out there looking at houses, your your mortgage interest rate, your mortgage, uh, yeah, your mortgage interest rate went up from two and a half percent to four and a half percent in like two months. So nobody can afford to buy a house right now. This is what's going on and it's not going to get better. Okay. There's nothing in the future that looks like any of this stuff is ever going to get better. The only place the future is bright right now is in Bitcoin. Okay. Of course, there are some other crypto assets too, but for people who don't know anything about anything, don't know anything about crypto, just Bitcoin. Okay. That's what I have with that as, as a quick, um, as sort of a quick update as to what's going on, why Bitcoin's important and what a good price is for Bitcoin. Um, anything in the mid 30,000s, you get anywhere near that, that's a phenomenal price. That's not saying that Bitcoin won't go down or couldn't go down. It certainly could. The floor for Bitcoin is around 32, 33,000. And what we mean by a floor is that there are so many people holding Bitcoin and so many corporations that actually own it and hold it, that even if everybody who had Bitcoin on the exchange sold it off, the price would go down to around $30,000. A lot of Bitcoin is being held. Very little of it is actually being traded. Okay. So that's why you say that that's a floor. Obviously, if the Federal Reserve wants to play some shenanigans, buy a bunch of Bitcoin and dump it. That happens, but if, it, if, if Bitcoin goes below that level, it's not going to stay there longer than a few minutes. Uh, that's just how it is. It's just how the math of the whole thing plays out. And we know this because Bitcoin is, a again, a limited resource. There's only 21 million that can ever exist. And a vast majority, well, not a majority, but around 40% of what's been minted so far has been lost. So really, they estimating around... Uh, 12 to 14 million total Bitcoin right now. And another 2 million left to be mined. So at most you have 16 million total that will ever exist. That can ever be recovered. Um, yeah. So enough on that, guys. That's what we got. Try to make this quick. Uh, God bless. Take care. And uh, yeah, Hed hedge a little bit with some food. You know, now's, the, now's the time. Now's the time with the old, so we'll have to see how the supply chain, how many truckers get involved in that DC thing. And it doesn't appear <clears throat> there is a channel out there called Economic Ninja that I watched from time to time. Who's kind of a, 
you know, fills in on a lot of things that are happening in, in world economics and finance. And he's in California. And he is actually going with the trucker formations. You know, I thought the trucker thing, the Washington, D.C. thing sounded like a psyop, right? But he is traveling with them and doing updates. So I'll, I'll keep checking him out and see if we can uh, stay up to date what's going on with our own little protest and see, you know, if we enact any strange uh, uh, martial law bills as a result of the truckers in America. I guess we'll find out. Anyways, take care, guys.